All right, so um, we are now looking at the last homework example or exercise from 3.6. And uh, this one's 3.6.7, it's called odd and even. So last week we finished up by um, creating a solution to a program that um, would return when uh, both numbers were odd. And in this case, now this program actually has two methods that determines when a num uh, when two numbers are odd, two numbers are even, or if one is odd and the other one's even. Um, but there is a bug in this program that we have to find and fix essentially. Okay, so um, let's go through basically what um, they have for us in here, because there might be hints and we should read through the directions. So the program in the starter code does not work as intended. So remember, this is called a logic error um, when code runs, but it just doesn't work as intended. Um, so our job is to find out what the issue is and to fix it, basically. Um, so the first thing we will want to do is we want to like figure out what the behavior is. Um, so let's see, the program asks the user for two positive integers and basically it's going to determine if both numbers are odd, if both numbers are even, or if one number is odd, the other number is even. So uh, again, first thing we want to do before even really diving into the code is just to test the and run the program to see how it actually behaves. And that will kind of illuminate what the problem is and will give us a hint into like where in the code we should be focusing. So let's go ahead and at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the program. I'm gonna run it and then what you will do is come back to this Pear Deck and answer this question. What is happening that we wouldn't expect? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to this program and then I'm going to make sure that I don't have any edits on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to history, reset the code. I think it did that, okay. So then I'm gonna to go to run and maybe make this a little bigger so you can actually see what's going on here. Okay, so it's asking me to enter two positive integers. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off with two odd numbers and see if it gives me ex uh, the expected result. So one and then one. Okay, so that's the correct result. So it seems to be doing okay with identifying um, when both numbers are odd. Let's do, let's say uh, one odd and one even. So I'm gonna say one, and two. Okay, it says one number is odd and one number is even. So it seems to be okay there as well. Now let's try if um, both numbers are even, two and two. And we can see that something's going wrong there. Um, so given given the fact that you've seen now that it, it, it gives you the correct results if both are odd, it gives you the correct results when one is odd and the other is even, but then something's going wrong when both numbers are even. What do you think is going wrong with the code? So um, what is happening that we wouldn't expect? What is the logic error here? What do you think? So come back to the Pear Deck at this point and go ahead and you can write a like a one sentence answer summarizing what you think is happening that is wrong. And then we'll dive into the code and see what's causing this.
All right, let's take a look at what you all thought. I'm gonna go ahead and share a couple of answers. So now you can come back to my shared screen. All right, so one person says that there seems to be an error when the user put two even numbers. Um, so the logic error is in the case where there's two even numbers. And then this person also went on to kind of uh, make the hypothesis that perhaps the mistake is in the method that determines when both uh, numbers are even. So that might be a good place to look. And then another person said, I think there's something wrong with the if else statement, which is causing the problem to falsely identify two even inputs as one odd and one even. So both really good hypotheses. Um, one person wa uh, definitely wants to zero in on a conditional block and if else. Um, and the other says that perhaps that conditional block that we are concerned with lives inside of this both even method. Um, so that's going to help us kind of zero in on what to focus on in this code. Okay, awesome. So let's go to the next step. Um, so yeah, here's what I said. Doesn't seem to return the right answer when both numbers are even. Uh, I think we all kind of figured that out. And now what we want to do is um, let's take a look at this code. So this is directly from the problem. So um, looking at the directions on the left, they did give us a hint that the error can be resolved in the odd even class. And so I went ahead and I took a screenshot of the entire class and here it is. So it has two different methods, uh, one called both odd that determines when both numbers, num1 and num2 are both odd. So it'll return true if they're both odd or false if not. Um, and then it has a method called both even that returns true if both numbers are even and false if they're not both even. And remember that one student said that maybe we should look at that method um, because it seems like this program has a problem in identifying when both numbers are even. So on this next slide, um, let's test out an input and see where this goes wrong. So what would happen if uh, we passed in two even numbers, two and two? So two for n1 and two for n2. Um, what would I actually return? And I know there's not a whole lot of space here, but try to do your best in bringing these two values down and working out what would actually be returned here. Looking at this, this is a compound Boolean expression that gets returned. So whatever this evaluates to, um, that's what's gonna be returned. So annotate that slide and tell me what would be returned, true or false.
All right, so you might not be done annotating, but I think we've got a good, a lot of good um, answers to look at. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of your answers. Um, some of you just put plain false, but didn't show me how you got there. Um, so I think it's really important to kind of show how we got there as well. So let me go ahead and show you a couple that do that. All right, so um, in this example, you can see that the student brought down the values, right? And one is gonna be two. Uh, so right here for N1, you can see that that got the value of two. And then N2 also got a value of two. So here's two right there. And then the rest is from the statement. So this is saying two mod two is zero. It's checking to see if two mod two is zero. Now, if you remember, mod just gives you the remainder after you divide by the number. So this is saying basically that um, two divided by two has no remainder, has a zero remainder. And if you divide two by two, it goes into it evenly. And so you are indeed gonna have a zero remainder. And so that's why this student went ahead and said that this side is, is true, but then, you also have the negation symbol, right? So you actually have not true, which is gonna be false. So this whole side is false. And actually, if you wanted to, um, you could just short circuit this, right? Because we have an and, and with an and, both sides have to be true for the whole thing to be true. So technically, you don't even have to look at the rest of it. You know that the left-hand side is false, so the whole thing is gonna indeed return false, okay? And that's a problem, right? Uh, because we actually put in two even numbers and we're trying to say, uh, we're trying to check to see if they're both even. So logically, this method should, should, it doesn't, but it should, return true. So this is indeed the source of our logic error, right? We want to take a look at why the heck this is uh, going wrong. Um, so in our next step, let's look at another, uh, let's see, let me clear this. Any questions on this, first of all? So uh, you have to remember your modulus, how to do modulus, right? Basically, you divide and find the remainder. So two divided by two doesn't have a remainder. So we can say that two mod two is zero because there's no remainder. And then the problem seems to be this negation, right? If we had left this true and true without the negation on both side, we might be okay. So let's check this out. Uh, let me clear this, clear. Okay, so yeah, the problem was that uh, this thing that should have been true, right? When we had two even numbers, it, re it returns false, which is unexpected because both of the numbers are even. So now uh, go ahead and, and I know I kind of talked about it, but circle the parts of the code that is causing this logic error and be specific as you can. All right, so I kind of ruined the surprise because I talked about it, um, but that's okay because sometimes some of us aren't listening. So let's let's go ahead and see what y'all came up with. And we can see that um, a bunch of students realized, oops, there we go. A bunch of different students realized that it is the not, right? The negation that's happening on both sides that's giving us the opposite of what we want. Um, in this case, we don't want we don't want the knots out there. So um, yeah, y'all are correct. You definitely want to get rid of those negations, those two knot operators. So what I went ahead and did is I 
kind of deleted those out of the code. So now go ahead and trace through. And this time, bring it down. Bring down the, those values and work out what the solution is going to be. So for n1, you got 2. And for n2, you also have 2. What's, this, what's the result going to be? All right, so it looks like most of you are done with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples here. Show your responses. Um, so if we bring down the, the values for N1 and N2, we get on the left-hand side, we're checking to see if two mod two is zero, right? Uh, checking to see if there is a remainder after we divide two by two. Um, since they go into each other equally, um, the remainder is zero, so that's true. And then same thing for the right-hand side. Uh, two mod two is also going to be zero. It's the same thing. So since we have true on both sides, true and true, um, that's the one case where an and evaluates to true. Uh, can we also re replace the equal symbol on both sides with a not? Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's try that out. Let me um, go back. That's a great question. Let me clear and then go back to here. There we go. So are you saying that you want to do this and then keep maybe keep this out here? Is that what you're saying? Okay, yeah, let's try it. So um, I think, yeah, I think that will work. So basically what you're checking to see is if two is, this is essentially checking to see if uh, N1 is an odd number, right? That um, the remainder is anything but zero. So these two right here, so odd and odd. So you're gonna wind up with false on both sides, right? because two mod two is equal to zero. It's not not equal to zero. So you're gonna get false and false over here and then you have to negate. So you're gonna get true and true. So yeah, that would definitely also work. Um, just a little bit more, I guess, complicated and less simplified, but it would definitely work. Yeah, yeah, great job. Uh, any other questions? All right, let's look at that. Um, that's the uh, more simplified solution we had. Just one more time. Bam. Um, so this one right here where there's no negation at all, um, that does work out. So um, I think maybe did I forget to put a slide there? Um, I, th I wanted to go ahead and test that out. Since this is just one line, I'm just gonna test it out on my own, on my own screen and uh, feel free to do that on yours as well or just kind of watch as I test it. So I'm gonna go to the actual exercise and then I'm probably gonna, there we go. So I can actually type. Okay, so I'm going to, Oh, Michael's re rejoining us. I am going to look inside of odd even. So not the tester, but the actual uh, odd even class that has those two methods inside. And then this is what I wanna change here. So I found that the logic error 
is that we are negating both uh, sides of the expression when we don't need to. So I'm going to keep this on my screen just because I want to see what the original was that I'm fixing. And then I'm going to put the fix below it. Um, just, just so that like I can learn from my mistakes, that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the knot from the left-hand side and I'm gonna remove the knot from the right-hand side. Um, I could even remove the parentheses, they're optional here, but I like them visually because it kind of separates um, the statements out and makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So now this should actually um, fix my logic error. So let's go ahead and try some uh, test values where both numbers are in fact even. So let me now zoom this in. So let's try two and two. Okay, awesome, that worked. And then I think actually there's test cases. Yeah, let's go ahead and check the test cases because that'll quickly test a bunch. Awesome, so uh, with even numbers, it got the correct stuff. And with even and odds, it looks like it only tested one set of even numbers. I wanna check one more time. I wanna check maybe, give me two even numbers. Let's go, what's your favorite even numbers? One of mine is four. Oh, I'm gonna put four and what's another number I could put? Nobody wants to give me an eat. Okay, 22, 22, let's go. All right, that works. Okay, so it seems like our solution uh, fixed the problem and that uh, another smart thing to do is to check to see if we didn't introduce other bugs. So I'll go ahead and do one in one for odd. That still works. I guess we'd never edited the odd one. Um, if I do one and two and odd and even, we do get that one number is odd and one number is even. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I know a lot of people like emailed me over the weekend saying I can't figure this one out. Don't worry, look how long it took us to like kind of go through and understand the problem. Uh, it took us like an entire class session just to go through this. So this one was a little bit more complicated to think about because we had this working code, uh, working in the sense that it compiled and ran and gave you output, but it had this logic error of giving you the wrong output for a very specific case, which then you had to like think about like, oh, it's happening to when it should be returning when both numbers are even. I need to look inside of this class that has this method called both even. Oh, that's probably where the problem is. But then beyond that, you have to find out what the exact problem is in this statement, which um, isn't immediately obvious unless you did what we did where we thought of a couple of inputs to test and to figure out why it was giving us the wrong thing, which is because of the negation, it was flipping the correct answer to the wrong answer. So um, debugging like this is gonna be a really good and important skill. Um, so it's great that we get that opportunity to practice. Okay. So let's wrap up for today. Homework. Um, so I did check the check for understandings, which is the little video quiz on Code HS. If you haven't done that yet, please turn that in. Um, and then if you have any late work from the previous homework, please turn that in by Friday um, so that I can have it graded for the new for the new teacher to take over. I don't want them to deal with late work when they first come to teach. Um, and then um, the 3.6 homework is due. Some of you turned that in early. Thank you. Um, I went ahead and gave you a grade. Um, but if you still need to finish up 3.6.7, which is the assignment we just worked on, um, make sure you finish that up and get it submitted. Um, I think I put a due date of Friday on this, um, but you could probably just knock that out today if you've been working along with me um, as we've been solving these problems. Um, so yeah, do Friday. Um, late work, try to get that in Friday so that I can grade it so that the other teacher doesn't have a stack of work waiting for them when they're coming on board. Um, yeah, so next class we're going to have a game day. Um, 
as our nice farewell party. Uh, so I hope you'll come. 